Hey everybody, I'm Tim Ward and welcome back to Garden Sense. Folks, I had a lot of emails from customers asking the same question. How do I maintain my lawn during drought-like conditions? So we're gonna focus a majority of the show on that today. We do have a couple of questions related to non-drought subjects. So we're gonna touch on those first. Buckle up everybody, let's jump right in. The first question is from Bob. Hey Tim, would you or someone kindly identify the plant in the attached photo? So this plant is called Blue Wild Indigo and it's considered a wildflower and it is native to the Eastern United States. It will often spread using rhizomes underground and because its roots are relatively deep, it's actually a plant that is considered to be drought tolerant. So congratulations, you have wild blue indigo. It's, it's a beautiful plant. Obviously, if you ever want to uh, kind of do a little bit more with it, help it spread, help it grow, get those beautiful blooms, putting down some, a little bit of garden trust would, would certainly not hurt. But again, it's a, it's a wild flower, so you can kind of leave it alone and let nature do its thing. The next question is from Karen. Hey Tim, I've been working on getting out the wire grass. I use Bonide Crabgrass Giller May 18th, 2023. I see yellowing in those areas. Should I seed or fertilize now? Lawn is looking stressed. The sprinkler runs every other day on the lawn. Hey Karen, thanks for reaching out. You definitely do not want to seed the area right now. It's just too hot. So what I would actually do is wait until the fall and then try to overseed in those areas that uh, you, you apply that bonide weed killer and, and it's creating some dead uh, grass area, some, some bare spots. What I would actually recommend though is putting down fertilizer right now. We recommend four applications of Turf Trust Lawn Fertilizer and June 15th is when we always tell people you need to be getting down your second application. So the time is now. So head over to rosensonline.com, pick up a couple of bags of Turf Trust Lawn Fertilizer. Again, right now we are running our summer stock up promotion. So you're gonna get uh, three bags of whichever Turf Trust uh, fertilizer you prefer along with any size that you prefer so again it's a great promotion it's the best price of the year so head over to rosen's online but you got to put it down now it's going to help with the heat it's going to absolutely allow your lawn to thrive through these hot summer months the third question is from mark hi tim I have spots on my apple tree that start off with light green spots that turn to a yellow color that turn brown and end up killing the leaves. Can you tell me what I need to do to stop this? So this is actually called cedar apple rust. And if it's not taken care of, it can absolutely impact the, the fruit, in this case, the apple, and, and how it's going to develop over the course of the summer. So we need to get this taken care of. Now, what you want to do is, is pick up a copper fungicide to treat this with. Now, we recommend uh, Liquicop uh, from Monterey. It's, it's a really great product. You can purchase it over at rosensonline.com. But you need to get this product down right now. See, what's gonna happen as, as you're already experiencing is some of the, these leaves are going to be impacted so much, you're just gonna completely turn brown and die off. So what you wanna do is make sure you rake up and, and collect those leaves and, and burn them because we don't want that disease you know, to, to spread any further. However, on some of the leaves, if, if the spots aren't too bad, the liquid cop should really help clear it up. And more importantly, it's gonna kind of help stop the spread, which means it's gonna help protect those apples. So hopefully you're still gonna have a, a really good harvest in the fall. Now, just a word of warning. If you were to Google cedar apple rust, you're gonna come up with two very distinct looking uh, diseases that are actually the same thing. On apple trees, it looks just like what we're describing. These kind of rust colored spots that slowly get bigger, they take over the leaf and, and the leaf dies. If you were to look at cedar apple rust on a cedar or a juniper, what it's actually gonna look like is kind of an orange spiky fungus ball 
that, that grows on the branches. So again, if, if you look this up online to get a little bit more information about it, don't be surprised if you see pictures that look complete opposite of what you're currently experiencing because what you have is cedar apple rust as it appears on an apple tree and not a cedar, not a juniper, something like that. So again, pick up some liquid cop over at rosensonline.com. You'll be glad you did. The next question is from Lou. Hey Tim, how should I apply kickstart to plants and flowers? To the base or just spray them? So this is why Kickstart is such a cool product and why I love it so much. Because you can use it as a foliar spray, you can also use it as a soil drench. It just all depends on what you want to do and frankly what you prefer. I'll tell you what I do, uh, whether it's, it's my flowers, whether it's bushes or some ornamental trees, I always like to start at the top and work my way down. So I will spray down uh, all the foliage of the tree or of the bush, and then I will actually end and you know at the bottom, uh, the, the base of the tree, base of the bush, and, and really try and soak the ground. Kickstart is such a great product. Again, it's designed to strengthen the roots of whatever plant that you are feeding it to. And strong root system is going to allow that plant to take in more nutrition, more minerals like iron directly from the soil, and it's just gonna improve the overall health. So again, I start from top to bottom when I spray, but if you just wanna spray down the foliage, great. If you just wanna drench the soil with it, that works too. The plant is gonna thrive no matter how you choose to use it. The last question is from Marilyn. Hey Tim, my grass is turning brown from lack of rain. Should I put down turf trust and then water it in? So I intentionally left this question for last because as I said at the top of the program, I've received dozens of emails pertaining to the drought that we're you know, going through right now. And as many of you know, there are large swaths of the country that haven't seen rain for four, six, in some cases, seven weeks and that can wreak havoc on your lawn. Now, I'm gonna address this, uh, the, the, the idea of, of you know, how to deal with your lawn during a drought, knowing full well that some of these areas have actually seen rain in the last couple of days. I know I have, I hadn't seen rain in almost six weeks, and it had rained very gently, very nicely for two and a half, three days. So all the, the, the grass I have, uh, the, the, the trees, the plants, things like that, everything's starting to look just a little bit better because obviously it's, it's getting rain. However, everything that we're gonna talk about here can absolutely be applied in the future. If some of you are already doing uh, some of these steps that I'm gonna to talk to you about, chances are your lawn probably uh, wasn't impacted nearly as much as others. So. Let's, let's talk a little bit about how to maintain your grass during drought-like conditions. The first thing you wanna make sure you do is, is fertilize. Now, I know some of you will say, Tim, I've always heard you should never fertilize during a drought. And that is accurate, unless you're using Turf Trust lawn fertilizers. So what makes Turf Trust different? Well, we've talked about it a lot here. Turf Trust is made up of over 50% slow release nitrogen. Now, unlike a lot of these, uh, uh, call them national brand fertilizers that you can pick up at the big box stores and, and, and maybe some other you know, local garden centers. They're designed to really saturate your lawn very quickly with a bunch of nitrogen and that is actually what's going to cause that burning to occur during you know, a, a lack of rain scenario. Turf Trust doesn't do that. Turf Trust feeds your lawn slowly and gently for up to 13 weeks. And that's really significant, and that's why I put it down on my lawn when I hadn't had rain for a while. It's, it's gonna provide your lawn with the nutrition that it craves, and it, it's gonna allow it to, to stay green even though there's, there's been a lack of rain. Now, if you put down Turf Trust religiously, uh, you know, four times a year like we recommend, chances are if you live in an area that hasn't seen rain in four to six weeks, your lawn is probably still looking pretty good. 
Um, if it's not, then let's talk through some additional steps that, that you should take and that you should be considering, again, to, to help keep your lawn healthy during a, a drought. So we, we talked on, about the fertilizer. The other thing that you want to do is, is put down Kickstart. Kickstart is, uh, again, as, as I've mentioned so many times, such a, a versatile product for your plants, for your flowers, and, and especially for your lawn because it helps strengthen the root system. Grass that has a, a strong root system is going to be uh, not drought tolerant, but more uh, drought tolerant than if you hadn't used it. A strong root system allows the grass to take in more nutrition from the soil. So things like iron, which helps keep the, the grass green, uh, a lot of the other minerals, uh, all that nitrogen, phosphorus, things like that, that uh, Turf Trust puts into the soil, Kickstart helps that, that grass root system take it in and, and keep it green. So one of the nice things is that if you are a habitual user of Kickstart, the chances are your, your root system is already very, very strong. And so again, your lawn is going to hold up much better during drought situations like we're in right now than if you just wanted to start using it right now. Now, we had a couple people also mention, you know, Tim, I live in an area where they're recommending we don't water our lawn. It hasn't been mandated yet. What do I do? Guys, that, that's just a personal preference, okay? I'm on a well, so if I wanna water my lawn and water my plants, uh, the only one it's gonna impact is, is me. Now, one of the things though that you wanna you know, consider doing is that if you do make that decision to, to water your grass, use Kickstart with it. That way not only is, is your grass going to be getting the water that it needs, but it's also gonna be getting an application of, of Kickstart that, that we just talked about. I don't need to, to kind of go through the, the, the benefits of that. So again, if it's not a, a full out restriction on watering your lawn, it's entirely up to you. I can't make that decision for you. But what I can say is that if you're gonna do it, add some kickstart to that process. So again, it, it's, it's not only providing the water, but it's providing that extra nutrition and you know, that extra boost that, that your lawn's gonna need. A couple other things to, to consider. If you are currently in a drought or you're looking ahead, you're like, boy, we're, we're probably not gonna get much rain for the next several weeks, be very cognizant of putting down any type of weed killers, uh, anything, any type of chemical, frankly, that's gonna go on your lawn that's, that's not a fertilizer. But w why is that? Again, most of these weed killers will say, you know, don't apply if it's 85 degrees or higher. Well, the, if you haven't had a lot of rain in your area, you can actually cause some damage to your lawn uh, even even below that 80 degree mark because again the, the grass is presumably in a in a weakened state which means it's going to be more susceptible to to those chemicals that during during normal applications during normal rain cycles during normal weather patterns wouldn't impact the grass it actually can impact the grass so again you need to be cognizant and just really start to, to look at the weather a little bit differently when you are you know in a drought or you are looking ahead at the weather as, as far as you can. I realize, guys, it's not a perfect science, um, but you need to you know, do some planning. If I'm gonna do any type of, of weed killing, it's either gonna be in the fall, right before I do overseeding, or it's gonna be in the springtime, you know, right when the temperatures are consistently at that 60, 65 mark. And the reason for that is you're less likely to impact the grass. If you try and put down, you know, weed killer and it's, it's 85 degrees out and you're not getting rain, you're just, you run the risk of, of causing more damage to your grass. So again, hold off on, on chemicals if you can. Try and stay off your lawn. I, I know that's uh, difficult to do. I have kids, they love being outside all the time and, and I'm not about to tell them, hey, it's a gorgeous day out, you can't play because I, I want the grass to look good. So I understand that there are situations where that's just really not feasible. You have pets, you have dogs that need to go out and do their business, I, I completely understand it. But if you can stay off it, try to stay off it. It would absolutely be the worst thing to do to do any type of, of aeration or dethatching. You absolutely do not want to do that during a drought because it's going to really 
damage your lawn if, if, if you're not careful. So again, try and stay off it. That will just be one less stressor that your, your lawn is, is going to be experiencing during you know, lack of rain. The, the last thing I would be really cognizant of is mowing. If, if you can get away with not mowing your grass during a, a drought, that, that's, a, that's a good thing. You, you, you need to start thinking about it in terms of photosynthesis, right? So, you know, we, we always recommend that you cut your grass around three inches. During a drought, I would absolutely let it grow, you know, three, four, five inches before I would, I would consider mowing it. And if I am gonna mow it, I would absolutely mow it on a higher setting. The longer the leaf, the more opportunity for photosynthesis to occur. And again, if there's not that water, if it's not getting that rain, we need to give you know, the grass as much opportunity to stay healthy as possible. The other thing that's gonna happen is cool season grasses, if it gets too hot, they go dormant. And so what happens is if you cut it too short and it's in the middle, you're in the middle of a drought, the grass is, is not going to grow back. And now we've got real problems because you've taken away that those photosynthesis opportunities because the blades are too short. There's just not enough there. And now you're exposing, uh, you know, the, the plants even more of the sun's rays. It's not getting the water. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, if you cut it too short during the middle of the drought, even turf trust, even though it's gonna help, may not be enough to, to really save your lawn. So again, be real cognizant about how you're, you're mowing your grass. Folks, I realize that's, that's a lot of information I just threw at you, but it's, it's really, really important that you take some of these steps. The, the great thing is some of these things, if you're doing them habitually, you're not even gonna to have to think about it if a drought hits. For some of these other things, such as, as you know mowing your grass, not using chemical stain off of it, that again is just trying to be proactive, thinking ahead, and again, trying to give your lawn the best opportunity to survive the conditions until the rain returns. All right, folks, just a couple final thoughts. Really the big thing right now, folks, is make sure you head over to Rosen's Online and take advantage of our summer stock up. It's still going on, and given now that some of you may feel a little bit more comfortable fertilizing your lawn because some rain has started to return to, you know, the good chunks of the United States, it's, it's still not all the rain that, that we need, but it's there. So if, if you're now more comfortable fertilizing, make sure you take advantage of the summer stock up that we have going on over at rosensonline.com. We're gonna run it for just a couple of more weeks, uh, but it's gonna be ending here pretty soon. So if you haven't taken advantage of it, make sure you do so right now. Folks, I really appreciate all of the feedback that we get from you. A lot of compliments on the show, which is always wonderful to hear, but we also get a lot of tips from you guys, things that you would like to see us talk a little bit more about. And obviously we love getting questions when, when you need help. So. Whether you want to give us feedback on the show, whether or not you just need some help with some issues dealing with your lawn, your gardens, your vegetable gardens, whatever it is, send an email directly to me, to tim at rosensonline.com. Again, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again, give me about 48 hours to, to get back to you because we are pretty busy this time of year. But again, we really appreciate all the positive comments. We appreciate the critiques that we get. And frankly, we just love when you guys reach out to us and ask for help. Folks, I hope you have a fantastic rest of the week. God bless.